Hi, I'm Joscha Bach. I'm a cognitive scientist. Currently, I work at Harvard at the Program for Evolutionary Dynamics. That's in Boston, in the US. I mostly try to understand how the mind works. That's what got me into academia. And I felt that the best way of doing that is to do artificial intelligence, because AI and computers allow us to make theories that we can test, which impose a huge constraint on the possible theories, because in computer science, a theory that works is one that produces directly the results that you intend to. So you can handle theories with a lot of free parameters, like we need when we want to understand what minds are. It's an interesting question. Uh, there are a number of implications that AI is going to have. The existing AI technologies that we have right now as they exist, uh, when we translate them into technologies that are deployed in society, this is going to be a very big change. I expect then uh, that in 10 to 20 years from now, there will be a lot of self-driving cars that will obsolete bus drivers, truck drivers, cab drivers and so on. Also, all the jobs in retail are probably going to go away because there is no reason why a human should operate a cash register. There is no reason why somebody should manually uh, pick uh, goods at Amazon uh, in a warehouse to put them into boxes. This is stuff that can be done by robots, by machines. And this means that a lot of the jobs that we have in the current economy are going to disappear and they're not going to be replaced by other jobs that you can do when you don't have an education as a programmer. And it's also clear, I think, that the jobs in programming will disappear to a very large degree because programming is not magic, it's information processing at a certain level. And most of that can probably be automated soon. So that means that we have to allocate resources in a very different way than we do now. It's not necessarily a bad thing because our productivity is going to increase. We can feed people better than we can do right now, we can house them better than we could do right now. So nobody would need to have to be more poor than they are now, but we will need to change the way that we allocate resources to people. And so far we haven't done a good job at this in our societies. So our productivity has increased, but our standard of living has increased the same as the productivity. And something needs to change about that. And these near-term concerns mean that people often think when somebody like Elon Musk or Stephen Hawking uh, warn about the long-term concerns of AGI that this is science fiction and we shouldn't be concerned about it. And I think it's a completely different topic, the risks from superhuman AI than the risks from near-term AI. It's basically like worrying about the possibility of an armed conflict, which is very bad, and we want to avoid that at all costs if we can, um, and the risk of a global nuclear war. The global nuclear war is not that likely. It didn't happen so far. We don't know what the probability is that it ever happens. But if it happens, it's going to end the world as we know it. And this is what some people are worried about. And it's very hard to put numbers on something, probability numbers on something that didn't happen. I think there is a chance that AI kills us before global warming does. I don't know how large that chance is, but I wouldn't say it's zero. And uh, that definitely makes it worth studying it and uh, thinking about these risks. Um, whether you and me should freak out about it is a completely different question, but it's very hard as I said, to put numbers on it, but certainly something that we as a society and as researchers th should think about. Because um, as soon as there is a system that is in an evolutionary competition with us, if that should ever happen, and that system is smarter than us, we are in a very bad situation.